Hey guys, Melting Lawyer here. Uh, it's been a little bit since I made a video last. Uh, I've been reading the comments and a lot of people want a video on just the control panel itself. So today we're going to do a short little video on just the control panel for the mini roller coaster. So a little back history on the control panel. Uh, about three years ago I built, was trying to build this and I built it for the No Limits 2 simulator game. Uh, I did have some help from uh, somebody down uh, in Florida. Uh, we communicated through email there for a little bit, trying to get everything figured out on how everything is supposed to work for the control panel. Uh, I'll leave a link to his videos down in the description if you want to know more about uh, the No Limits 2 simulator control panels. Uh, after that, uh, I went on and started building the roller coaster that you see behind me. Uh, so I have taken out the no limits out of this control panel completely. It no longer works for no limits. Uh, it is specifically only for the roller coaster at this point. I do have it disconnected from the roller coaster. And uh, I can still turn it on and we'll, I'll show you guys how everything works and what all the functions are on it. Uh, and if you guys have any other questions about the control panel, <clears throat> or any questions about the coaster just leave them down and I'll try to make a video I've been really busy with work and everything going on uh, so it's kind of hard for me to make all kinds of videos but I'm trying to get out there and get some videos made <clears throat> so we have an LCD screen uh, this is probably new since last time I made a video uh, the casing at least is the LCD screen I've always had I did change a little, a few things on it, but the LCD screen, we'll start here. The LCD screen, that tells me uh, cycles. It tells me uh, any errors that it might throw, faults for some people. Uh, we deal with errors for the roller coaster. And all the lights that you see up top here are for the uh, block breaks for the roller coaster, so I know what block is occupied. Uh, so that's really all the lcd screen does it tells me if a, like the e-stop was pushed uh over speeds under speeds uh, the run times uh etc uh so over on the far side over here we have three key switches <clears throat> the very first one up here is the control power key this is the main key that turns the rod on um so all it is is a two position on off and that's it. Uh, I'm going to pull that key out so you can see the next one. Uh, the one underneath it is your uh, operator's mode. Uh, auto, manual, and transfer. It's a three position, so it's in auto. We can turn it to manual, and then we can turn it to transfer. Uh, auto is the ride is in normal operation mode. Uh, manual mode is the only time I ever use manual mode is to clear uh, errors. That's the only thing it's used for for the roller coaster at this point is to clear errors. Uh, I do have a mass button in the box that you see right there to clear block breaks. Uh, I will probably eventually add it in where that has to be, the ride has to be a manual to clear that. But for the time being, I got a mass box. It's, there's a button in there that clears the block breaks if I have a ghost train or something. And then we have transfer mode. And if you guys haven't seen my other videos about the transfer table, uh, that was probably one of the hardest things that I had to build. And uh, you have to put it in transfer in order to use the transfer table panel. <clears throat> so that's what that's all that key switch does. The one underneath it is your maintenance bypass key on and off. It's just a two position key switch. Uh, maintenance bypass is used only for one thing. For the mini roller coaster and that's to start and to start the lift you don't have to have it to stop it but if you do stop it you have to have the key back on in order to start the lift back so that's the only thing that that's used for uh moving down to the next one the knowledge button the knowledge button uh, is used for two things to clear errors and to uh clear your light test when you first start the panel up and you guys will see that here in just a few minutes uh, then we have two gate switches that work the queue line gates in the station. 
they both do the same just open close either one you can flip either one they're both wired together so it doesn't really matter which one you use uh, then we have the two orange buttons these are this one's locker strengths and this one's unlocker strengths these do not do anything for the roller coaster uh, when I build it for no limits they actually worked for no limits I have not incorporated anything for the roller coaster at this point for these two buttons so all they are just flashing lights right now you can still press them and they just alternate is all they do uh, moving down we have two green dispatch and advance buttons uh, they do just pretty much what they say they just dispatch the train out of the station uh, that's really all that they do uh, and then we have the HMI enable button HMI it stands for human machine interface uh, as you can see I do not have a, a touch screen for it uh, they cost a little bit too much for that but the HMI in this case all it works is auto and man auto mode or however you really want to pronounce it but uh, you press the button it'll just sit there and run by itself you don't have to press the two buttons and then you press it again and it goes back to where you can operate it uh, that's really all that button does so moving over onto this side of the board we have our e-stop emergency stop and our lockout uh, the lockout tag out actually does work you can put a lock on it however you want to do it it is a three phase disconnect switch the real deal so that's really all that is and it works just like an e-stop if you turn it uh, it'll tell you on the screen that it was e-stopped you got your e-stop reset all that does is reset your e-stop then you got ride start and ride stop starts to ride stops to ride lift start lift stop starts to lift stops to lift that's really the basics on how this is set up uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the control panel around so you can so I can go over a little bit on the back side. There's not a lot to it. And then I'll flip it back around and we'll uh, power it up and I'll kind of show you guys the flashing lights and just the startup sequence on it. Uh, but like I said, if you have any questions on this part or anything, just uh, drop a comment below and I'll see what I can do to answer any of the questions that I might have. So uh, just bear with me for a second. I'm going to flip it around and be right back. Alright guys, so I got the panel flipped back around. Uh, we are looking at the back side of it uh, with all the electrical wiring and everything. Uh, so we're going to start here right dead in the middle. This is the brains to the coaster, to the control panel, everything. And it's an Arduino Mega. Now back when I was using it for no limits, it actually had an Arduino Do. And for anybody that knows anything about Arduinos, uh, Arduino Do's only put out 3.3 volts, and that's not enough to run the LEDs. I have to have 5 volts for all the LEDs, so I actually had 2, and that's why it's a little bit bigger. I don't know if you can see, but there's still holes from where there was another board in here. So, after switching over and just using it primarily only for the roller coaster, I took it out, and we only used the Mega Nelf for that. So that is the brains and it works this and the control panel or and the coaster without the control panel the coaster don't work so uh, all the buttons are labeled on the inside so I know which ones are and all the wiring runs back into this into the Arduino that's really all there is there's a, a beeper up here uh, anytime it throws a, a, an error uh, it'll beep telling me and it'll just stop the ride uh, and then up here in the very top we have this giant connector and uh, that's what I used to connect from the control panel to the roller coaster uh, when I first built it it wasn't portable now the roller coaster is portable I can take it and part in five pieces and it travels no problem now so everything is quick connects all the wires are universal so you can't get them mixed up so it really makes it that much more easier and then you have just the back side of the LCD screen and then the the block lots that's really all there is um, 
As far as adding much more to the roller coaster, there's not really much more I could add to it. I'm kind of maxed out on pins for the Mega. So uh, I think there might be maybe 10 left, maybe if I'm lucky. So I'm pretty well maxed out on pins for the Mega. So I'd have to get another board and get them to communicate with each other in order to add more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it back around and we'll... Uh, power it up and I'll show you guys the startup sequence on it and uh, we'll go from there alright guys so I got the control panel turned back around and I now have it plugged in so we can go and go ahead and start with the startup screen so as soon as you plug it in which you don't have to plug it in I actually have it wired in to when you just plug in the one main voltage it powers everything but for this I have to plug it in uh, by itself so we can run it without the roller coaster because the fan is just a little loud and I didn't want it to interrupt the video. So, uh, when you first power it on, the LCD comes on. You probably won't be able to see it in the camera, but the LCD screen is on. It's blue. You probably won't be able to read anything on it. Uh, if someone wants to know what it all really says or something, just leave me a comment or whatever. So, uh, we'll go ahead and start with the control power. As soon as I turn it on, it's going to be like a five second delay. And then you're going to start seeing all the lights and it's going to start beeping. So this is your light test. And all the lights light up and it alternates the knowledge, as you can see. I'll pull that key out. You can see it alternates. Um, all that's telling us, and then the LCD screen is displaying... Uh, a uh, lot test press the knowledge button so that's really all we have to do is just press it and it'll stop beeping so now we're into the startup sequence uh it is a little bit of a long startup sequence to get everything started up the way it should be but uh the ride start button has to be pressed and held for four and a half seconds uh if you press it and then let off of it it's gonna make you restart again so uh what we'll do is we'll have to press and hold it for four seconds. The light will go out, telling us that we've held it long enough. And then you can let off of it after that. It's going to wait, make you wait four and a half seconds, and then you have to do it again. So now we got to press and hold it again for another four and a half seconds. And like I said, if you let off of it, you got to start that sequence back over. That's just pre-start up. Uh, and then after that, we have a blue light. Now, if, if we e-stop the ride before we start the ride up, we won't have this, and it'll throw an e-stop telling you that, hey, can't start up yet. You got one of the e-stops hit. Check your e-stops, etc. But uh, we don't have these two pushed, and I don't have it connected to the other e-stop, so that's why we have a blue light. So we can press that, and that's just a press. You don't have to hold it. <clears throat> And then we're going to come back down here, and then this is when we start actually starting up the ride. So, uh, that's why you have two warnings, then your e-stop reset, and then your final is, are you sure you want to start the ride? And then we're going to start it. <clears throat> so, the ride is now started back up. Uh, all the lights are blinking now around the board. <clears throat> and... Uh, now we got to start the lift up, and I took the maintenance bypass key out to show you guys that without this key, we can't start the lift up. So we have to have this key in in order to do that. So we have to put the key in and turn it into the on position. And when I do, you'll see that the light will light up, telling us that we are ready to start the lift up now. Now after I start the lift up, uh, well before we get to that, the LCD screen is telling us to go through and... Uh, flag the proxies where they might be a train and the reason for that is so I don't have to do a block reset every time I start the ride it's just easier for me to tell the computer where the trains is versus not where a train is so we actually tell it where the trains are before we start doing anything so before we start this we go ahead and tell the computer hey I got a train in the station and on the ready brakes etc so uh, we'll press and hold this and you'll probably see some lights light up up there for your block brakes and that is just because we didn't flag any proxies and the computer just assumes that that's where I have the trains parked and the reason these two there's three and there's only two trains 
is because the offline is always occupied even if there's not a train in there until we clear it out and that's just so we don't have any crashes or anything like that so this is normally the trains parked position one in the station one on the uh, ready brakes or uh, main brakes whichever is preferred but and then the offline this is the offline this one is the lift and the transfer table so right now the ride has started up uh, we have our two green flashing buttons uh, the reason we have them is because we have a train in the station if there was no train in the station or there's a train on the lift and in the station you lose the ability to dispatch your valid timer is no longer acceptable so you have to make sure that the, the valid timer is enabled because if you have a train on the lift and in the station until that train leaves the lift you cannot ship out the next one so uh, there's not one on the lift and there it thinks there's one in the station so that's why we have the green lights to advance it uh, it also uh, the LCD screen tells us that the lift is in high or low speed uh, with pulse width modulation of course and uh, that's really the sum of the control panel I can't really think of anything right off the top of my head that anybody else would like to know about it uh, I really hope this video was helpful maybe somebody out there would like to build one themselves if you do have any questions about it or anything just let me know and uh, Make sure to like, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, I will try to get another video out. Like I said, my video ideas come from you guys. So make sure you leave one down in the description of what else you'd like to see about the mini roller coaster. And uh, I will try to get it made as quick as possible. And like I said, I appreciate each and every one of y'all. And I hope everybody has a great rest of your evening. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much.